for the first time, Trevor Cavallato will lead the Wheel and Modified Tour to the green flag on the inside lane along one of the veterans. It's Patrick Emerling to the outside lane. Green flag is waving here in Riverhead and outside out in front. Patrick Emerling noses ahead, but Catalano rallies back to the bottom as they compete for that top spot. Catalano moves up the raceway, makes slight contact with the one car of Emerling. Emerling always had problems here at Riverhead Raceway and a couple of years ago in his family owned car was able to start to turn the trick. But well, right now he runs second to Catalano. They head out of turn number two and down the back straightaway. The Catalano family is used to running on large, wide open racetracks. We've seen Trevor be so good at those racetracks early on in the season, but we are now into a stretch of three races of bull rings. It was Manadnock two weeks ago, Riverhead here today, and a couple of weeks in June we'll go to Seacon Speedway. But that doesn't seem to hold Trevor Catalano back. He jumps out to the early race leading. Now his cousin right behind him in the 51. He spent a lot of time racing here. Meanwhile, trouble turn four. It is Jake Johnson, last week's winner at Manadnock Speedway, who was going around. Left rear tire is down on the three car. They got down into the corner. Johnson was on the bottom, and the car just snapped around. I wonder if it was a left rear tire. Green flag back in the air. Emmerling with a good start. Catalano gets sideways. Emmerling way up the hill. Here comes Lutz to the back bumper. But Catalano maybe did not get the tires cleaned off before he went back under the green flag, stepped on the gas, the car just went sideways, and everybody got into him from behind. Locks the cars, dripped up the racetrack a little bit. Catalano gets the boot. Meanwhile, we've got trouble down in turns one and two. Multiple cars involved. And watch the leaders up front, as Steve noted. They got walked up the racetrack and stacked everybody up, and it wasn't until mid-pack when finally the accordion came together. Green flag is out. Emberling and Lutz toe-to-toe, dead even across as they go for turn two. And Emerling again up the raceway, but that allows the 46 to gain the momentum on the top side of the raceway. And Craig Lutz comes to the lead. Here comes Ron Silk. Silk, little by little, marching forward. Battle up front for the race lead. Ron Silk goes to the inside of Craig Lutz and completes the pass in turn three. Our fourth leader of the event, Trevor Catalano, Patrick Emerling, Craig Lutz, and now Ron Silk out in front 30 laps in. But he'll feel the heat to the inside from Patrick Emmerling in car number one. And Emmerling's been hanging around here early on. He's got a good car right now as he comes back to the third spot. Emmerling has been outstanding here at this racetrack. He's got five runner-up finishes, a victory and a seventh over the past several starts here. He has gotten very good here. And he said one of the reasons why is he's figured out how to be patient at a racetrack where the chrome horn is probably one of the biggest tools. And then all of a sudden, little by little, he's starting to get much better in car number 32. Three wide for a moment as Tom Rogers got into the back of Tyler Ripkema. That put Doug Toby to the inside lane. The big loser is going to be Jack Hanley and then some Hanley into Beattie across the star finish line. Caution. Number four is out. Beattie did not hit the outside wall. I think he'll be okay. He'll continue on. We rack him up one more time. Green flag goes out. This time, though, Lutz does not dive to the inside lane. He'll challenge to the outside of Ron Silk. Craig Lutz, car number 46, to the outside of Ron Silk. Silk with a good run back on the inside. He'll lead at the line. Ron Silk to the inside. Craig Lutz to the outside. Lutz settles in behind him. Here comes Justin Bonsignor. The race in September, the outside lane was the preferred lane, and everybody ran up top. Craig Lutz sideways in second. Three wide behind. Kyle Bonsignor to the bottom for a moment. But both Patrick Emerling and Justin Bonsignor gave the 46 enough room to gather it back in, and I think that saved the entire field. Monsignor right now looks pretty strong on the outside of Patrick Emmerling, and here comes Austin Beers with him. In the tire tracks of Patrick Emmerling as Monsignor nearly collects the outside wall off turn four, gathered it back in. Emmerling is sideways and out of shape. Three wide behind them. Here comes Trevor Catalano to the top side. Here comes Anthony Cecily down on the apron trying to challenge Austin Beers. What a job. Oh, contact there. Around goes the 56 of Catalano. Oh, a bunch of cars get involved. 32, Tyler Ripkema. Brody has got some damage there as well. The 88, Roger Turbush and Tyler Catalano in it as well. Mark Stewart trying to pull to the bottom lane. If it came across another, another car, it would have punctured it. So they had to come down and get that taken off. Green flag goes back out. Silk back on the go pedal. Much better this time by for Ron Silk as Craig Lutz in car number 46 comes to the second spot. Tyler Ripkema back on pit road. Justin Bonsignor to third, but here comes Cecily to the outside. Here comes the 51 car now. Justin Bonsignor, but look at Craig Lutz on the outside. 
Ronnie Silk battles back to the inside. It'll be Lutz at the line this time. Craig Lutz, car number 46, with a good run down the back straightaway as he'll try to come out in front of Ron Silk. But Silk again battles back to the inside, and Ron Silk will lead that time by. Ron Silk, a half a car length advantage at the line, but Craig Lutz is not going to fade away easily up there in the top groove. He'll hang tough to the outside. Ron Silk to the bottom, still not quite able to clear Craig Lutz this time through. What a job by Ronnie Silk giving Craig Lutz plenty of room to the high side of the raceway. And Silk continues to move back to the front spot, but Lutz is still right there on the outside. And they're two by two through the top eight. You go back to the top ten, even still side by side there. They are stacked up like they're running a pace lap here at the racetrack, but they are full speed inside lane. Ron Silk with a slight advantage, but the outside group continues to come in until turn two. Now Lutz gives Ron Silk a shot getting down into turn three. Ron Silk, car number 16, your race leader. The 46 car, Craig Lutz, is second, Justin Bonsignor to third, but he feels the heat to the high side from Austin Beers. A header pipe comes off a car and drifts right across the front of the racetrack, and it's hit by Ronnie Silk. Silk hits the debris off turn number four as a caution flag was coming out, and he's got damage to the front of the race car. Green flag back in the air, Ron Silk with a good restart. Here comes Bonsignor. Here comes Lutz, though. Lutz nearly got the bumper to the outside lane of Silk, and he'll tap him into turn four. Now they are side-by-side -side for second again as Ron Silk able to open up two car lengths over Justin Bonsignor, battling with Craig Lutz for second. Exactly what he wants to see, but now Bonsignor with a clear run to the inside comes to the second spot, and here comes Austin Beers. What a ride for J.R. Bertuccio. Anthony Cecily into the outside wall. Caution flag is out. Heavy damage to the right front tire of Anthony Cecily. He ran out of racetrack at the exit of turn four and pancaked the right side with a hard, hard hit to that 19 car. Hey, let's get another look at it. Cecily was running in the outside groove and the car just took off. Not able to tell whether or not there was contact from behind or if something went away, but the car darted. Green flag comes out, Ron Silk, an outstanding start, breaks free. Austin Beers looks to the inside. He wants second under Justin Bonsignor. Great run by Austin Beers to the inside. Again, we said he's been patient all day long, and now the patience has paid off as Austin Beers comes to position number two. What a drive by Austin Beers. He has been very patient throughout the day today. And that has been the factor. Third now for Justin Bonsignor. Lap traffic up ahead may become a factor here with three to go. It's Gary McDonald, the head of the race leaders. He's in turn two. Race leaders in turn one. But Austin Beers remains about one to two car lengths behind Ron Silk. Silk going just fast enough to keep Austin Beers at bay. 198 laps down. Oh. Caution, it's Tom Rogers who has spun off turn four as the field was about to come to the white flag, but we will be set for overtime. Rolling to the inside lane. Ron Silk is going, but Austin Beers keeps the wheel to the outside in turn two. Great run by Beers down the back straightaway. He gets to the outside of Ronnie Silk. White flag will be out this time by. The race will be official. Silk to the bottom. Beers side by side on the top side. Can he keep the nose alongside and challenge for the win? He'll drop in line behind. Beers with a tap to the pumper. Silk up the racetrack, but the checkered flag is out. And for the third time this season, Ron Silk has won on the Wheel of Modified Tour.